Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Construction Show. I'm your host, Jared Downey. We're filming episodes from Ag One in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we've got Sheldon Shepard back on the show. This is Techway's third episode. Great to have them on. We're going to be discussing some specific topics. And Sheldon, it is great to have you back on. You're the Aggregate and International Sales at Techway. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me here today. It's a great opportunity, and it's been a good show here this week. Has it been busy? Yeah, it's been busy. We, It's probably one of the busiest I've seen, and everybody seems to be excited. You know, everybody's happy, good outlook for the industry. It's a, It's an awesome time to be here. Is do you attribute it to the industry doing well? Why do you think it's? Uh, do you know the reasons why it's well, yeah. Uh, busy? Yeah, I have actually yes. Having worked with this industry over twenty years, uh, you know, you develop the heartbeat for what's going on. You know, what's the latest and greatest in the industry? How's everybody feeling? You know, you can always tell it when it's an upbeat environment that you're in, and everybody's excited, and and people are expanding. So definitely, it is a very good outlook and a very good sign. What do you think is? Uh, do you know the main drivers? That are you? Do you get a, kind of get a pulse for that of, of why it's doing so well? Well, you know where this show and is, you know, revolves around construction materials. So, and construction materials, both in building, you know, houses, buildings, uh, expansions, uh, plus highway building. Uh, you know, the highway bill, money being spent by government on new roads and infrastructure, uh, you know, those are the definitely the drivers for this industry. It lives and dies by what goes on in those. Yeah, I was just looking at the size. Like, for anybody who doesn't know, like, the U.S. construction market size is about $2.3 trillion in 2023. <laughs> $2.3 trillion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next time you're walking out for the paper or something like that or going to the grocery store, just look around you at everything that's made out of some sort of cement asphalt uh, that has some sort of rock product in it and then think gee how big is how important is this industry yeah it's, it's crazy um and just yeah and, and and where you have in the u.s you have obviously the infrastructure as it, it it's kind of this perfect storm of the, this need for new there's all this new technology that makes more things more efficient and a lot right. of buildings in the u.s and infrastructure in the u.s needs to be updated uh, so it's like this perfect time right now, right? Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Just notice all the cones along the side of the road and the paving equipment and new construction, building new, you know, roads, bridges, buildings, parking lots, infrastructure, and housing additions going up. All that. What is your main focus? Do you have a couple products um, that you are kind of highlight or you want to highlight today on the show? Yeah, well, typically our main product for the construction materials industry would be conveyor belt scales, and secondarily would be volumetric control gates. Now, those are primarily used for the aggregate industry. We do have a couple of other items that would be appropriate for the cement industry, and that is making dry Portland cement, but we won't get into those parts very much today. We save those for the future. But primarily, I'd like to be able to talk about belt scales and then about control gates, because those are critical parts to what's involved here at this show with this industry. Um, obviously, your clients already know, but can you just run us through the, the, the belt scale systems that you have in place? Okay, that's a, good, really, that's a really good question. Now I fully understand. So a belt scale is used for monitoring material on a conveyor. You know, anytime you've driven by or seen a plant, of uh, making an aggregate material, you see lots of conveyors on there. So each of those is carrying a particular sized product or raw product of a, you know some sort of rock that's been crushed down to produce some sort of final gravel product. And how do you weigh that? You know, imagine how you control your process, your production. So we have scales that you can put in there in those conveyors and measure the tons per hour. You can totalize and also send information to the control system to help better the process and control what you're making better, too, as well. And those come in all shapes and sizes and various levels of pricing and, and costs. And they all, depending on the desired requirements for the customer and cost-benefit ratio, 
Techway can meet just about any requirement in terms of conveyor belt skills. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. With Fender Dunlop, you know you are getting the best conveyor belting in the market. That's because they ensure the integrity of their conveyor belting by monitoring each step of the manufacturing process in their North American facilities. Focused attention is given to each belting order to guarantee that they produce a belt that will assist the customer in reducing operation costs, maximizing uptime, and improving revenue. Visit FenderDunlopAmericas.com to learn more. Dayquip specializes in the design and manufacturing of attachments for all makes and models of compact excavators, wheel loaders, crawl do dozers, and articulated dump trucks. You can choose from any of their engineered attachments, or they can design and build to your specifications. All of their products can be shipped anywhere in North America, hassle-free. If you don't see it, just ask and they will build it. Check out their website, www.dayquip.com, or email them, info at dayquip.com, for sales, quotes, and support. Did you know cementitious binders can be responsible for up to 70% of the total GHG footprint of mine backfilling processes? Now you can replace up to 50% of the binder in your mine backfill operations with Graybond, Graymont's new low carbon cementitious binder. This lime based alternative binder maintains a 40 to 70% lower GHG footprint compared to typical cement and can adapt to varying mine conditions without compromising performance. Learn more about Graybond at graybond.com. What what would be the what would be the starting and what would be the what what can you do? <laughs> Let's go for both extremes. Oh, well, we can weigh just about any conveyor as long as it's there's enough loading. You know, you can't really take a 36 inch wide conveyor and measure feathers on that, you know, and expect to weigh on that. The other thing is if it's weighing a huge amount, then you really have to build a super strong uh, weigh frame and equipment to be able to handle that high loading. It's really the more the limitation is about light loading. So it's, you can't really take a conveyor and weigh a very extremely light material on it. It's just not going to work very like well. Like with sawdust, like things like yeah. that, would that be considered? Sawdust. Sawdust is at the lower end of the spectrum. We can do sawdust. It would be more like some sort of fiberglass fluff type product. Or another challenging product is a, a and this is in the aggregate industry, it would be bagasse, which is from uh, you know sugarcane production, uh, processing sugarcane. It produces a very light material. So you have a large conveyor with a very light belt loading on it, and then you have a very high dead load when you combine the load of the belt with the loading of the idler and only a very small load of material, then your live load is really low, so it makes it really challenging to weigh. But we have ways of doing it, but most of the time, yeah, most of the time, uh, or sometimes we have to work with the client to make modifications to their process uh, in order to make the weighment possible. Is the what about the data collection or maybe either the data collection may be the same, but is so I guess that's the first question. Is it the same? But is the second part of it then what's the next level? Is there is there a version where someone can just walk by the conveyor and get the reading? Then is there one that goes into an integrated system? Is there sort of different levels to how the data is is um, received and sent out? Well, I think that's a really good question. And uh, let's first talk a little bit about how, what are the components of a system. So we have a scale that's measuring the weight on the belt continuously. And it's interpreting that for, say, let's, ex for example, pounds per foot. But if we're in other countries, like metric, then it'd be oh, kilograms per meter. But since this is in the USA, we'll, we'll talk in, a, you know, English, American units and pounds per foot. So it's weighing the load. The other part of it is the belt speed. So we would have a belt speed sensor. So if you have the load and you have the speed, that enables you to continuously compute the rate, uh, which that enables you to totalize those kind of things. So those, both of those signals, though, go into a box. And that box is usually called an integrator by those of us in the belt scale world because it integrates load and speed to come up with a rate. 
Now on that box, because you were talking about is it something you can just walk by and look at, that box is also an interface to do calibrations. And plus people, there are various customers who that's all they use. And on that box, they're able to see the tons per hour, for example, the total, the accumulated total in the belt speed. Plus they use that to interface with the belt scale for routine calibration. Now, so you have that, so that's available. The other th challenge for a belt scale manufacturer is sometimes people want to connect it to a PLC, and sometimes people maybe want to connect it to an Allen Bradley PLC, a Siemens PLC, some sort of other device. So we have to be able to be flexible in our communication protocols to be able to connect to a wide variety of devices. Some people even still use a much older fashioned method of connection, which is called analog output. And that is a very common style called 4 to 20 milliamp output or a pulsed output like generating a pulse for each ton that goes by an electrical pulse and that's basically sort of a flancy way of one of those clickers you know ever you've probably seen one of the clicker things you know for counter that's basically i, I did that, that job is. i did yep. that job with one of those little clickers counting yep. highways so a belt scale can be kind of a fancy electronic clicker too and provide an output to something that's monitoring those, that electrical pulse, and turn that into information. But that's a bit old-fashioned, but more commonly nowadays is either like Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, or Profinet to be able to communicate with a wide variety of devices. But there are people, too, that may not have a PLC, or they may not want to take it directly into the PLC, or they may also want to send it up into the cloud. And then in the, when the information is up in the cloud, then they can pull it up on a website with a dashboard and monitor it that way. Because there are smaller operations, for example, maybe the, the owner is monitoring the plant and they are on vacation with their family down in Florida or someplace and he wants to pull up on their iPad what the plant is doing. Uh, and because they're measuring our equipment is used to measure production, of the plant and production of various materials, they can quickly pull it up and see what's going on. Something that when we're talking about this, it's, it's curious. When does it go wrong? What what, what do, you, do people? What errors are people making with um, this equipment? Yeah, that's a that's another really good question. And everything starts. Of course, this is going to sound a little silly, but everything starts at the beginning. Your success, whether you you know, are going to have a good outcome really begins when you first start looking at the application. And so in evaluating application, is it the right place to put a belt scale? Are all the application parameters, like is there enough tons per hour? Is the belt speed too high? Is it a good place to locate a belt scale? If you take all that into account and make sure it's evaluated properly, then you're putting it into the proper location on a conveyor. The next part is to make certain you're doing the proper install. Um, are you following all the guidelines? Are you skipping something? Because you're taking a really expensive, relatively expensive, good piece of quality equipment, and if you don't install it correctly, it's not going to perform correctly. The other part would be maintaining it. You know, keeping it somewhat clean, housekeeping is a uh, you know is is something to really take into account. And the other part is is it being calibrated appropriately, and are calibration records being kept, and are people trained sufficiently that work around belt scales to understand that acts that they may do, like you know think of a conveyor belt for example. Sometimes they have to manually adjust tension or those conveyor belts may off track a little bit, for example, and the customer uh, makes those adjustments, but they don't recalibrate the belt scale. And the belt scale is weighing material through a rubber band, and it's a dynamic environment that it's weighing through. So all that has to be taken into account. That's why Techway is really big on offering customer training uh, at very little or no cost. Do that training without it can, uh, this might be a little bit of a silly question, but 
it, it, without the training, can you get it right? Are there operators that have done it enough, or is it a specialty thing that you, if you actually want to get it right, you need someone out there doing? It? And I, I'm kind of what I'm kind of hinting at too is, you know, oh, there's a cheaper option from you know a no brain, no brain, in, or <laughs> no brand import or something mm-hmm. like that that someone tries to put it. And I'm not asking you to go after those products. I'm sure there's some great ones that come out there, but is it? Is it possible to get it right if you don't have it sort of set up initially? Well, you correct. might get close. Close. You might not achieve your objective. And then you're trying to use this information to make critical changes in the plant and for critical process monitoring. So if you just take, a, if people just take a little bit of extra focus, uh, usually they can have a much better conclusion. There, are, But the customers, like you brought up a question how do people get it right? Some people go to training with Techways. Some people watch our YouTube videos, or some people study the manual. Other ones just kind of have a natural-born sense of, you know, mechanical and electrical nature with a lot of experience in plants. Other ones in our industry have, you know, customers have learned in trial by fire how to make something work properly. So they all agree that you know, training is important. Or at least, and sometimes it's just calling up one of our tech support people and speaking over the phone for five or 10 minutes. Just what are the guidelines? Yeah, I, you know, I was on your, just on your YouTube channel. Well, this one has belt scale installation, 10,000 views on it. Um, People are liking this video. But you've got a lot of these like very specific training videos. Have you had good feedback from that? Like your YouTube videos are actually walking people through very specific things. Yes. Sometimes uh, I've done one and Techway other people have done other ones. Sometimes I'll get a call. I know that it's been successful because I'll get a call and people will relate a question to one of the videos. So that's a good feedback mechanism to let us know that it's actually working. Well, it's just something I, I always try to encourage. Like, be more specific. And I mean, I go on your YouTube channel. It, it's like it's like pasta. <laughs> like you're being a you're, you're being specific within the specifics. Um, yeah. And it's yeah, maybe only a hundred people watch that that video, but those hundred people are the people that need that video, right? Yes, exactly. So um, that uh, the other one you the product you were saying about was the control gates. Um, is that a pretty large portion of the business at Techway? It's a smaller portion than than bell scales, but it's a critical part of a type of aggregate plant called a fraction plant. And a fraction plant is unique in that they make all of this different sized product. There are piles of spe- like specifically half inch, specifically quarter inch, specifically three quarter inch, and one inch, and so forth. And then they blend those materials to make some sort of mixed outcome, with some sort of combination or blend of materials. Now, the, what they will have are bunkers and usually a tunnel underneath those bunkers, or they could have bins, and those are all feeding down onto a belt. And any one of those bunkers or bins are an individual-sized product. So if they want to make a particular product, a blended product, they need to know how much half-inch and how much three-quarters of an inch to blend on the fly. So our volumetric control gates are used in those under those bunkers that they can start a blend and then open up the gate to a specific uh, uh, length of opening of one opening to one opening and another gate to another opening on another size product and blend a ratio on the fly of a material. That's called a fraction plant or fractionated stone. So this would be, sorry, I just wanted to clarify. So this would be, and hopefully we can find some pictures or something of it. So this would be, so they'd be multiple. So you explained it really well, but I kind of missed a couple of things. So sure. are there multiple feeds then happening yes. into one, into like one conveyance system that's then going into a, like how is it, how is it material getting mixed? Yeah, well, the it literally is laying down one size on top of another size on a conveyor. Yeah, doing a layer, but then it goes right from there into some kind of loadout. It doesn't go usually into a pile. It may go into like a loadout bin 
or it may go right into rail load out, meaning that what, with the advantage of the size product is, you know, you, we all know what's occurred over, let's say, the past 30 years about people trying to have less inventory, you know, and minimizing inventory levels. Well, instead of this plant having all these different piles around of all this different product, it, they can make whatever they need to on the blend, and then it immediately goes out to load out. The other advantage is, imagine if you have two or three sized products in a, you know, in a desired mix of aggregate materials. If they put that into a pile, it's going to stratify. It may form, you know, more of one on one side and less of another on another side. So if they go out there, you know, to do a quality check and take a five gallon, bu five gallon bucket scoop from part of that, and they go to their lab and test that, it depending on the side of the pile that they're doing, it might not be, you know, meet at their quality standards. Right, so that layering materials. system basically ensures an even distribution. Yes. Oh. Yeah, the, the, everything's all consistent. And it goes right from there into loadout, and almost immediately after loadout, it goes right to whatever site it's being used at. It seems like the, the control gate maybe even... Maybe not more, but in comparison to the belt scale, that could be something that could go wrong if you don't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, usually, pretty exact. Yeah, well, that's one of the one of the things you know could potentially happen is part of it breaks, leaving that uh, you know gate open under there, and then that's why we include a manual backup. So for some reason, if there was an electrical failure to the control gate, or you know mechanical things break. And uh, if that happened, then there is a mechanical backup that they can go in there with a crank and close that gate. Because once that gate is open, the material flows. It just keeps flowing out. There. out. Yeah. Yeah. So there are those kind of things. And those gates are more than just dumb gates. They actually communicate with the PLC on their position. Uh, uh, I'm just curious, moment. Sheldon. Is there any, I'm not asking you to name names or anything, but is there any sort of a problem-solving situation which that stands out to you that you go, yeah, we, we, we fix that. Techway fix yeah. that. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a good point you bring up because there is a common problem and we see it routinely, and that's what's called loadout optimization. So how do you load a truck, and this isn't custody transfer or like invoicing type loadout for you know, for sale or trade, it's loadout optimization so you don't overload a truck or you don't underload a truck. Because if we're helping to load a truck using a conveyor and a belt scale to monitor that, if they don't get that correct and that truck is overloaded, whenever that driver gets out onto the highway going to deliver their material, they could be potentially subject to fines from the State Department of Transportation for being overloaded. That's, it's not just about aggregate and gravel trucks. That could occur likewise with any truck. The other part of it is that cost from going to the aggregate plant to its destination, that's going to cost be a fixed cost for that. And if it's underloaded, then that truck's not being utilized. Likewise, in rail loadout, uh, if the rail car is overloaded, uh, they can be subject to fines uh, for the people who loaded that car out. And then if it's underloaded, that transport method still has a fixed cost with it, and it's not being fully utilized. So what we can do is by using belt scales, we can hit really close to that desired number. So if it's like 25 tons, we can hit within a few hundred pounds of that instead of just somebody eyeballing it as often in the past. So that's the big advantage of that. Uh, do, do a lot of people realize, is that, a, is that an error that happens quite often? Is that a common thing? Well, it usually happens. It's one of those kind of things that, uh, usually it's corrected when there's pain that starts to occur. When the fine shows Either, up at the head office. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. That's usually, you know. That's when you get the call. We all know about that. That's when it happens. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just wanted to quickly, while I got, got you on too, is just ask you, um, in both scenarios, good maintenance versus bad maintenance. We talk about it a lot just sort of in passing. You know, it's important to maintain. But, again, you kind of make the assumption people know what that is. And you might, maybe a new manager is 
operations managers watching this episode. Mm-hmm. They don't know what yeah. they don't have the experience to be able to identify what the difference is. What do what does that look like? We can use both products as an example or another product if that's a better fit. Yeah. Well, no, a belt scale is a perfect one to use because it can be subject to, you know, we're weighing in a dynamic environment. So we want most of the influence on the belt scale to be from the material. And, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of moving parts going on there. And again, we want the main influence on the belt scale from, to be from the material. So things like roller wear, if, you know, sometimes you might go into an aggregate plant, you might see one of the roller cans on the idler and it's stuck and it's worn, you know, a flat part on it. And if that's right in the scale area, that's going to cause problems. So there, it's important to do a visual inspection to make sure there's not some rock stuck somewhere that's important to us or that's going to cause a problem with the scale or the speed sensor uh, it maybe has been damaged. That's why it's important to use good maintenance practices and um, and also understand if work is done around the scale to know how that might need to the scale might need to be protected. Or the other part would be to make sure that you recalibrate after doing certain work, like if you replace a belt on the conveyor or retract the belt or or weld near the scale. We, that creates some spare parts business for us. When somebody goes and welds near the belt scale, you know, with a, a arc welder and they don't disconnect it and ground it out properly and they pass 200 amps through our belt scale, we're going to be getting some spare parts orders there. But we would rather teach you in advance uh, not to do that. Well, how often is it, is it uh, you know, incorrectly using the right equipment they've got the parts they need but they've got the wrong wrong uh, not application but wrong uh basically use of the application or or just not tuned properly i guess yeah more it's not tuned properly or maybe that here's another thing maybe the application it was originally for maybe it was originally for 250 tons per hour and now they go why is it not working and we go back and look up the original data from eight years ago and it was for, you know, now they're running 600 tons per hour when they were running 250 tons per hour before. Well, we just and, did an episode we, about screens. Yeah. So they swap right. out and you start using a different screen and all of a sudden the whole process now all on the conveyors is different. Exactly. What changed? So that's one of the big things there that we go back and compare original data to is what changed. But we take the time when we meet with customers or somebody calls in with a problem to be able to explain that, not just give them a fix, but try to help them understand that. And here's one thing that's really interesting is the companies, the aggregate companies that are very successful with belt scale products, uh, they take ownership of them and they uh, invest in getting their people trained and, uh, you know, having people like myself and other ones come out to do any training and send people to Techway for more advanced training. Yeah, which is, again, you're talking about, again, let's say you bought one from online somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it comes, that that training, especially, we've talked about a ton on this show, just the worker shortage now. You you can't you can't have not have training available now. I mean, you can. You're going to get some version of the work done, I suppose. Um, but having right. Techway actually coming on the ground. And before I let you go, Sheldon, I could I could keep you here for a while, honestly. But I just wanted to kind of, just to sum up, the expectation of somebody watching this episode, they reach out to Techway, what's sort of the process um, from first call to, you know, operations, maintenance? What, what, what Can you just kind of walk us through maybe a few, like, primary steps that they can expect? Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because remember when I talked about it begins at the start? And so this is what, how it starts. It's the first part, usually the interaction between Techway. If a customer says, I want to put a belt scale here, as we will, could possibly have a representative come out and do this or check out something. They could do it themselves as we would get them an application data sheet. And it's going to have some questions and some information like, what are the tons per hour? What's the belt speed, idler spacing, length of the conveyor, uh, some dimensional information? So they fill that out. And very often in that data sheet, we're going to see key clues in there 
to see if we need to go back for some additional information. If it was just occurred over the phone or through email, we might ask for some pictures just to double check something. And then our objective would be to make sure the most appropriate equipment is quoted for that application. There would also be some dialogue based upon what the requirements are for the customer for accuracy. Do they need a super high accurate, more expensive system, or just a normal half percent process scale? So we'll go through that dialogue. And then we would go through an order PO type of you know process in that. We would ship them after several weeks, the whole scale in a crate, and we would advise them to take the whole crated unit there to the conveyor so everything is all there together all the install hardware and another benefit techway provides is we pre-program most of the electronics and everything that needs to be done based on the data that we provided is all pre-programmed so that enables the customer to uh, you know to do a better startup and sometimes they might get a service person of ours or one of our channel partners to go out there and assist them with startup and commissioning. Um, and some customers are very experienced at doing that, having taken the Techway training, and so they do it themselves. What is, uh, just, uh, I promise the last question, I know that it's wrapped up for the day, but I, I also know you're you're pretty passionate about this work. Like, we've, yeah. we talk... You know, we talk off air, and and you're you're the same. You you go into the details, and it's you're, it's exactly the same as you are here. Is how you are off camera. Um, yeah. What do you what do you enjoy about it? Like in the day, I mean, you know, you do something. How long have you been in the industry? Did you say? Oh, thirty years. Thirty yeah. years. So how you know twenty five years beyond? You know, how do you start your day? I mean, you're you're passionate about it. Do, do you have yeah. a, a reason why, or is it just? the enjoyment of, of doing is if you were doing something else, would you be as passionate or is it specific to what you do? Well, I th that's, that's a really fascinating question because, uh, you know, I've, I, when I was younger, when I was a youngster involved in this in my early twenties, I, first thing I did was go to the old grizzled service guys and befriend them, the old engineers, the ones who knew all the tricks and various things and that and became to learn. But the other part of it is going out and seeing your equipment installed correctly, seeing customers happy with it, seeing them improving their production process. You know, it, it makes it a wonderful experience. Because also, I'm driving by some construction site somewhere, some dam, some roads, those kind of things. I see aggregate materials. I may know where they come from. And I go, I played a hand in that. And I know that stuff is going to be here for hundreds of years. You know what? So. It's it, it's you just brought up something, and I've never I've never clued in because I I love the industry, and it's something that I never clued into is that is something I love about it that everywhere you go, you can be driving down through the middle of nowhere and you'll see a plant somewhere, and I mean it probably annoy my wife with it, and I'll go, oh that that person's been on the show, their president's been on the show, or it just there's these little relationships that are re represented all over the place. And cause you touch so many different, you know, even sectors, um, yeah. but, but also different types of companies. And we're very similar in that way that kind of everywhere you look, if you're plugged into heavy industry, it's kind of like many right. friends everywhere. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. Very much that way. Yeah. Um, Sheldon, it's, it's so great to have you on the show. We've done three episodes now together. They, i they feel like they just get easier and easier to do. Um, you know, Rose is just fantastic to work with. Your, sure. your whole team, Michael Ginther, uh, he didn't do this one. Where is he at the event too? Uh, no, Michael's out doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is on a service call. Yeah. So, yeah, it means we have a lot of service going on, and he's a manager, but he's also going out doing service himself. That's one thing. I just want to say a little thing that's fun about working at Techway is, I mean, I go on – I pick up one every now and then for fun, a service job. Our general manager, uh, he came up through the ranks. He could actually go out and do a service job, do a quote, do sizing. You know, you work with a whole bunch of people here who have a vast knowledge and people with experience. So it's really fun. Yeah, it's no, it, it's, it's so, it's quite an honor for me to get to know these companies. And there's, you know, there's companies that just, for whatever reason, stick out to you. And I, I think it was just the way Rose, right from the beginning, was so excited about it. And then you came on, and you were passionate. And you, like, 
like some people, it's when we do plan the shows, and some of them are great guests. I don't get me wrong, but they just right. they just do the checkpoints. They just go through the outlines. But then some people, it's like no, they want to explain. They want to like rework things, and you're just one of those people. It just makes it so much more fun. It's really not yeah. like a job when you're doing it that way. So I love. I love making people smarter about this. That's a great way to say it. Exactly. <laughs> Sheldon, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, I think we'll be doing it again. Uh, but, yeah, so we'll talk soon. Adios, amigo. I enjoyed it very much. You have a good one. Um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, check out Techway. They've got, uh, they've got a very good YouTube channel. So go check out some of their training. You can get very specific um, on there. Check out their website at techway.com. Of course, there'll be a link. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on LinkedIn. Connect directly with us. We'll put uh, Sheldon's LinkedIn in the description as well if you want to connect direct directly with him. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching, everybody. We will see you on the next episode of The Construction Show.